Now I went back to the basic definition of our cow class here, and if you've noticed throughout all the videos, I've used action as our delegate type for our event. All right, and you can use whatever delegate type you want, but 99 times out of one, <laughs> meaning mostly always, by convention and only by convention, we use delegate types that um, basically of type event handler, or this generic one. I'll get to the generic one in a minute. Event handler, if I hit F12 and go look at the metadata for event handler, it is a delegate, but it takes two arguments, unlike action, which took none. All right? The first argument is sender, and this last argument is this event args E. All right? I'm going to click on event args and hit F12 and see what complexities exist in this event args class. So F12, hey look, it's mostly empty. All right, so don't don't let this let this fool you. This this event args it keeps a static reference to itself, but then other than that, there's really nothing in here. It's it's just an empty class. All right, but it's a convention thing. We'll see in a minute. Okay, so I'm going to close both of these, and now that I've changed this to event handler, Moo expects two arguments. All right, let me bring that back up. The first argument is the sender or he or she, the object which is invoking the event. And the second argument is some extra details if we wish to pass them, but we can't pass any details in this empty class. Okay? So, here we go. Moo, sender, the sender is this object. Alright? And for event args E, I could pass null here, but that's kind of bad form. I could new up an event args. But if you remember, I just barely looked at event args, and it has this public field empty, which is basically a newed up event args for us. Okay, so so there we go. We're invoking this, saying we're the invoker, and here, there's no extra information. But I wanna I wanna have some fun here. Let's give this cow a name. So public string name gets set, and then down here, let's our first cow. I'm gonna say name is Betsy, and our last name cow. C2, I'm going to call this C1. It's new cow name Georgie. If that's how you spell Georgie. Who knows? I'm not the spelling expert on fake names. Okay, maybe that is a real name. Sorry if your name's Georgie. Okay, so now I'm going to say uh, C1. Let, let's actually, before we do that, let's make a, a handler method that can handle uh, this move. So let's go... Let's go static, void, um, giggle, because when we when we tip over a cow, we're going to giggle a little bit. So giggle, and remember there's two arguments now, object sender, event args e, and now we know that the compile time type here of the sender is object, because it has to be, but we know the runtime type, it should be the object that's uh, causing the event to happen. All right, which is this cow. So we can visibly see it, but when you subscribe to any object, especially a lot of them in the GUI frameworks, uh, it's just the object that's causing the event to happen. So I can actually cast this. I can say cow c gets sender as cow, and then I'm going to say we made, well, we need the giggles in there. Giggle, giggle, dot, dot, dot. We made plus, let's put the c's, uh, name here, Moo. All right, silly example I know, but it drives home the point. So let's go here, and I'm going to say uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to give this some runtime feel to it. I'm going to say cow victim gets new random dot next uh, mod two. If that's equal to zero, then it's going to be C one. Else it's going to be C2. All right? and if you look at this, what I'm really doing here is just generating a random Boolean and using a ternary operator here. I'm saying, hey, give me a random Boolean, and if it's true, then we'll reference C1. Otherwise, we're going to reference C2. But either way, we have a victim now. We don't really know who it is until runtime. I'm going to say victim dot be tipped over. We're going to give him a good push. Okay, The push is going to cause the event to evoke. And the object's going to pass itself, and we'll receive it here, figure out who we tipped over, or succeeded in making moo, and then we'll giggle at them. So let me just run this full out. 
And, uh, of course, <laughs> we got no output. That's because we didn't subscribe this handler to either one of the cows. Um, uh, what is it? Moo. Moo event. So, c1, c1.moo, plus equals, giggle, and then down here, c2.moo, plus equals, oops, giggle. Okay. Now, let me just run it straight out. Here we go. This run, this time we've managed to make uh, Georgie Moo. Let's let's try it again. This might be a little fun. Oh, there's Georgie again. And I wonder if we'll ever get Betsy. Oh, there we go. Betsy this time. All right, so on and so forth. Okay. But what I wanted to drive home here, there's a few things. We're, in the next video, I'll show you what this event args is all about. For now, the sender, just by convention, is the object which is which is causing the event to happen. So this is kind of useful because... I have two cows, and if I really want to know which cow I'm dealing with, I can say, hey, who are you? I can't remember what's your name. Let's talk about it. You know, you're not always interested in this argument, but once in a while you will have uh, one event handler subscribe to several events of the same same object type or event type. and So it's nice to differentiate. Well, who are you? And use the sender argument to figure that out.